I'm not an authority. There are no scientific authorities. That's a key point. There are scientific experts. Richard knows a lot about zoology. I know a lot about physics. But there's no one whose views are not subject to question. And that's the key point. And there's no student that should ever be afraid of saying to a professor in a science class, you're wrong and here's why. Except and in I, Germany. Ex yeah, except in <laughs> Germany. Anyway, maybe, maybe I think we've... So I think why are you upset why I'm just, when I'm questioning you now? Like, you know, isn't that the same thing? You know, isn't it like you're, a prof you're one of my professors? Well, I... Uh, no, what... Um, I, I think we're, we're trying to have a discussion, but maybe I think the point is uh, that maybe we should move on. I mean, well, y you say you're a, R a Roman Catholic, and... Um, I'm also, I also study physics. Yes, but I mean, do, do you think the wafer turns into the body of Jesus? No. Good, I'm delighted then to hear Then you're not it. really Roman Catholic. <laughs> and, and, and the other thing that's important about science, and, and we had this discussion last night in the, in the Muslim Forum... I mean, forum. like, I might give an example, like, you know, people didn't really by the whole relativity thing when Albert Einstein first came up with it. You know, there were people, like, you know, it was when those former scientists started dying, that was when people started accepting relativity. But the difference is, you know, it's, it, but there's a fundamental difference, that, and, and you, you should really appreciate this, and I'm surprised in some sense that you don't yet, but I hope you will. Well, tell is me that, that, listen, listen to me for a second, is that there's a difference between a story and something that makes predictions. And the only thing that really makes science really interesting is it works. And so last night, I, I, when, when, when I was debating with this Muslim, I, I challenged him when he said it's rational. I said, you're choking. I have two choices. I do the Heimlich maneuver or I pray for you. Which do you want me to do? And I think the real point of science is that it works. And if it didn't work, none of us would give a damn about it. Given how much scientific knowledge has advanced over, say, you know, well, obviously all centuries, but particularly the past century or so, why has science not yet done away with belief in God? It's a good question. I thought when I was a youngster that it would have by now. I think in the first world, it's clear that there's a monotonic decrease in the number of people who, who uh, affiliate themselves with organized religion. Where religion really has, uh, has it on, on science is the notion that somehow, without religion, you're not a good person. We have to convince people that, that, that using rationality and empathy is a basis of morality or, or behavior that's... Most people don't base their morality on religion in spite of what they say. If, most, if, if you ask people, if you didn't believe in God, would you go out and kill your neighbor? Most people will say no. And so we have to overcome centuries and millennia of religion having a monopoly on this idea of morality. And, and um, I think because of that, uh, and the fear of death, the fact is that, that, that uh, uh, people would rather cling when they're afraid of something, to a priori beliefs, then rather open their minds. But we have to convince people they shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid of science. Accepting the reality of nature makes life more exciting and even more precious. Not uh, being a person of faith, I didn't have to start my discussion by whatever Arabic uh, sentence you, you had to start yours with. I'm free to start it with however I want, which is I find liberating. Now, let me first say, I, I want to thank you very much for your the kind graciousness with which you invited me. And um, I'm very hesitant to say some of the things I'm going to say because I learned to be polite to your hosts. But I think it's polite in some sense to, to try and, uh, to try and um, point out nonsense when nonsense is there, even if, even, if, uh, even if it's offensive. So I'm sorry that I'm sure I will offend some people in this audience. Um, I generally offend people in every audience so you should feel not particularly special. And, and the, the point is that I, what my science is a human cultural activity. And in fact, if you read my writing, you'll see that I say the worth of science, in my opinion, is not from the technology. Well, we tend to love its technology, which has made the world a happier, healthier place for most people. But it's the fact that like art and music and literature, it forces us to reassess our place in the cosmos. It, it, it opens our eyes to the world. And art and music and literature do that, but so does science. And there's no sense in which science reduces the value of art, music, and literature. As, 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 and in fact, the most famous example I know of in that regard is from Richard Feynman, I wrote a book about, who said that a rainbow isn't any less beautiful because you understand how it's caused, it's much more beautiful. When you understand the amazing things that are happening, in fact, it's much more exciting. 
The key thing that I think both Richard and I want to do is excite people about the, the wonders of reality, about the real universe and how amazing it is, and, and, instead of, and, and realize that they don't need this fake universe of myth and superstition. For me, that's what drives me. Is I think, and, and as an aside, I think people ultimately lo lose religion, but personally, I'm driven more by getting people excited about the real universe. And you might say, and I've had this discussion with at least one or two of the people who were in the beginning and end of the film, one in particular that I know of, whether, you know, if people find solace in something, is it, you know, is it reasonable or justifiable to argue that, that what they're finding solace in is, is not right? Well, I don't think either Richard or I would go to someone's deathbed who's, who's clinging on that and say, oh, you know, forget it. But, but uh, well, it depends who they are, actually. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, um, but, the, but the problem is that it's not innocuous. That, the, that, that, as a, that beliefs, as I think I said in the film, that beliefs in things that aren't true inevitably produce actions which, which are harm, often harmful. And so if it was just innocuous, I, I think I'd feel a lot less uh, worried about it. But it's not innocuous. And therefore, I think it's really important to try and convince people to base their actions on reality. And, uh, on the whole, while that may hurt it's some people, on, I think on the whole, it leads to a better society. That's the great thing about science, which you can call atheism, if you wish. It's you're willing to change your beliefs. You're not assuming the answers before you ask the question. You're not assuming you know what's divinely right just because you interpret a certain book to mean a certain thing, and someone else may interpret it to mean something else. You will agree there are different interpretations of every book, including the Bible and the Koran. And so, you, to presume that you know divine truth before you've asked the universe is not sensible. But there are things that are fundamentally scary, say for example the aspect of, of death that means that you, firstly it's an unknown and secondly that um, it is, you are going to be separated from people that you of love. Of course it's scary. So what's, what does it matter if some people choose to mitigate that fear by belief in... Oh, there's not... Look, if, if, if every man or woman was an island, it wouldn't matter, but people have control over other people in their lives, either teachers or government officials. So when you accept myth and superstition, at one level, if it's just affecting your internal behavior and beliefs, well, that's fine. It helps you get through the day. We all invent fictions to get us through the day. Uh, we could go... We could list a litany of them. But when it impacts on our policies and the way we behave, whether we say gays are evil, which is, which is clearly manifestly empirically incorrect, when, we, when, when it determines policies and makes, those pol and makes us behave irrationally, that's a problem. And inevitably, it spills over from one end to the other. And I think that's the real problem. I, you know, it's, one could say, I don't care what people believe, it's, how, it's what they do, but what people believe uh, impact on what they do. And, and it's not as if religion is universally bad. Of course, it's responsible for many people's doing good actions. The, a friend of mine, a, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, just said, um, you know, there are good people and they're bad people. Good people do good things, bad people do bad things. When good people do bad things, it's religion. Certainly, there are limits to science. As, it, as an empiricist, which is what I am, um, empirically, there are limits to what science can do. In fact, in my own field, cosmology, there are clearly limits because we are, we are um, we have one universe to, to observe, and most of us live in that universe. The Republican Party in my country doesn't, but 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 um, the the uh, there it is. so therefore because of that, there may be many universes, and therefore there's a, obviously in some real physical sense a limited domain over which we can explore, and that's the key point. It's not just tools. All of every academic discipline uses tools, and they're in, in some ways they're not that different. But but the key part of what makes science science and what makes it work is it's based on empirical evidence, sort of rational thought applied to empirical evidence. And therefore, if you can't measure it, even in principle, I mean, there's lots of things we can't measure that we can talk about as a theoretical physicist. I think about things a lot, a lot of things we can't measure right now. But if you can't ever measure it in principle, then then science really has nothing to say about it. I would argue that m anything else you tend to say about it is not worth much either. But, uh, uh, but it's certainly Careful. a fact that science generally can't address it if you can't measure it in principle. And, and that's, um, that's of fundamental importance, I think, and we forget that. And so I think um, the difference that I would say is that the limits, I don't, is that I don't know what the ultimate limits to science are. There are limits now. And there are many areas where science has very little to say right now. But can I say that it will never have anything to say about it? Absolutely not. There's a huge difference between 
what's unknowable and what's not known. And so the only way you can find out if science has anything to say about it is try. Right. And if it, if it has something useful to say, then make pr predictions which agree with experiments, then it, you can make progress. But you can try it, and it might not work. And an example right. you know, might be sort of sociology, where they tried to use the language of physics to apply to societies, and it was far too premature, much too, right. too complex. And consciousness, which is, as I was telling Dan, if I, you know, I, right. I did physics because it's easy. If I want to do the hard stuff, mm -hmm. I do consciousness. Right. I think what you said is correct. You found, you found a way to find an ethical theory that makes those two apparently inconsistent things consistent. Okay? Yeah, right. And I think, and I've had a lot of discussions on stage and off stage with various theologians whose job is to do just that, to find ways to resolve apparent inconsistencies, to find eth ethical solutions that validate their belief. But that is what's wrong. Because the point of science and the reason it works is you don't just try and prove something you like to be true, you also try and prove it to be false. And that's what's really important. You don't just find yeah. a way to yeah. say the rainbows are caused by this or that. You actually try and see if your ideas are wrong and ask what's more plausible and based on evidence and, and inquiry what's more plausible. So what I find problematic is that the effort to find a rational excuse for something can work. But that doesn't make it right. That doesn't mean I respect ideas. Okay, some ideas are ridiculous. And that's perfectly reasonable. In fact, ridiculing ideas is what makes progress. So if I offend some of you, I don't mean to offend you personally. I may offend some of your ideas, but I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. Just as if, just, in fact, if you confront my ideas, um, it will lead to a discussion. Um, what does offend me, of course, is offending personal freedom and, and equal rights, and that's one of the reasons why I got upset at the beginning of this um, uh, session. But that's been fixed, and I thank the organizers for that as well, to agreeing to not segregate this room in a 21st century is a great step forward, and I appreciate that. Um, now, you know, I'm really shocked. <laughs> First of all, all of the, I've watched, uh, 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 Mr. Sources, right? Sources. Hey, My Greek is pretty good. I think. Big gorgeous. Food. Yeah, gorgeous. Well, you are rather gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous George over here. Um, uh, has all, I, I watched some of these, and they're always exactly the same. So I thought they'd be different this time. Um, and it always begins with you, and I'm supposed to respond to you. But the, and I will to some extent, but it's hard to respond to nonsense. And in fact, the point of this is not is is not a question, does God exist? It's not, that's not the question. It's atheism, or I Islam or atheism, uh, which is more sensible, I think, is what it says, or something like that. Now, I, I was just shocked, because, because I thought that you wouldn't bother to try and pretend you knew science, because you don't, and we're going to go through that in, in real detail. Everything you said is nonsense when it comes to science, and so we'll go through, and we'll have a little chat, if that's okay. Of course. Okay, good. Um, and, and so I found it uh, remarkable that you began with that kind of nonsense, and we'll, we'll continue from that. But let me just first begin with the fact that the, um, that the premise of this debate is in some sense inappropriate, um, because it, it suggests two things. First of all, it suggests that Islam is something special, and it isn't. It's not special at all. It's one of a thousand religions that have, or more that have existed since the dawn of humanity, all of which claim divine revelation, all of which claim perfection, all of which contain, uh, proclaim infinite knowledge, uniqueness, beauty, etc. So Islam is just a religion like any other religion. And there's no difference. It's, it's, it proclaims just as the Rig Veda did and Akhenaten in ancient Egypt that the universe had a beginning, nothing special, okay? It, there's, there's absolutely nothing special. So the question is, Islam as one of a thousand religions, all of which make the same claims, but mutually inconsistent ones. So one of the things we know is, of these thousand religions, they all make mutually inconsistent claims, so they can't all be correct. In fact, at best, one of them can be correct, because they're not, they're not consistent with each other. So that means a priori, just a priori, and I know, you know like that, you like that term instead of a posteriori. I've heard you say that. A priori, Islam has a probability of 0.1% of being correct. Because it's just one of a thousand religions, and one of them is, it, 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 
at, at most is correct. But since they all make the same claims, it's probable that none of them are correct. So, that's, so treating Islam specially is inappropriate. Then atheism is somehow, as has been described speaker, a belief system. It's not a belief system like, like uh, Islam or Judaism or Christianity or the Norse myths or, 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 or Zeus or Thor or any of the other uh, myths that have been created throughout human history. It's all it's saying is, it's not a belief system. It's saying, you know what? We don't choose to believe that stuff because there's, it's not sensible. So it's not saying we believe X. It's saying, well, this, this myth is inconsistent with this myth, or this myth is inconsistent with what we know about the universe, and therefore, it's unlikely to be true. So what atheism is, is just saying, this is unlikely to be true. It's not a belief system. So to compare one versus the other is, of course, false. It's a false premise. Human civilization began by putting purpose and, and, and intelligent purpose behind gods associated with the sun, the moon, the planets, the wind, the earth, the oceans. There, it's been, by one estimate, over a thousand different gods throughout human history. Mars, God of War, Poseidon, Thor, all the rest. And the really important thing is that all of you, or almost all of you probably, are now atheists regarding those gods. Just, the only difference is it's just one that we may disagree about. But 999, we all agree, have been thrown out. And the reason they've been thrown out is they've been buried by the rise of our physical understanding. Science works. And the fact that science works has buried the gods of the wind and the sun and the moon. Farmers now, as I was just saying, when it, when it doesn't rain, they don't pray for rain anymore. They go see a meteorologist. And that's a good thing. In the process, the human condition has improved immensely. And it will continue to improve as science continues to bury the one remaining God. Now, this one God is supposedly left we might ask a priori or in advance, how, how likely is it in advance that, that all those other 999 gods were false, but this one's true? Well, you might argue if you had a flat prior that it's probably a pretty small likelihood. But it doesn't really matter. The point is that our current understanding of nature has changed. We've learned things. It's changed and developed since the claims were made by Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the Sun. And therefore, it's natural that science is inconsistent with those claims based on ignorance. And we shouldn't revere those ancient claims as sacred. They're ignorant. There's still many open questions. I'll try my one, my ten seconds of humility. It's the only time tonight. There's a lot we don't know about the universe, a lot more we don't know than we do. That's the wonder of science. That's why I'm a scientist. But it is intellectually lazy to just stop asking questions and stop looking for physical explanations and just say God did it. Now here's, a, here's an idea of why common sense should tell you that Islam, like many other religions, is not common sense. Because of course homosexuality is perfectly natural. In all, in all animal species almost it's natural. It occurs with a 10% frequency. Okay? In fact, there are good evolutionary reasons for homosexuality. So in that sense, there's no reason and a fundamental... Why would a god who thought it was a sin make it natural among all species? I don't think the sheep, by the way, which 10% of sheep are long-term homosexual relationships. Okay? <laughs> Why would a god who thought it was a sin create sheep who don't have a soul, who, can't, who aren't able to think about it, be homosexual? That's the kind of nonsense that we have to ask. And the only way we can determine if it's nonsense is by looking at the world around us, not by deducing it, not by listening to the words of ignorant individuals and Iron Age, Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the sun. Wisdom and learning comes from observing the world around us. And we shouldn't take our wisdom from people who didn't even understand the way the world worked. Thank you.